You're listening to the Kilcullen Diary Podcasts. Stories and sound from a village grown bigger. Hello, I'm Brian Byrne and this is Kilcullen Diary. Mythology is a wonderful thing. It allows us to imagine stuff and tell it as stories. That they might be far-fetched isn't an issue. It's the tiny seed of fact which turns into magic that can make a child's eyes light up in wonder. And if we're fortunate, as adults, we never lose that childish sense of awe. And so to the Giant's Causeway in County Antrim. A geological fact that triggered the tale of two giants, Finn McCool and a rival across the sea in Scotland, Ben and Donner. As the story goes, Finn built a causeway of giant stepping stones across the sea so that they could do battle. But when Finn saw the size of Ben and Donner walking towards him, he fled back home and disguised himself as an infant in a crib. When Ben and Donner saw the size of the infant, he thought the father must be enormous and fled back home to Scotland, breaking up Finn's causeway as he went. The geological fact is that the unusually shaped columns of basalt rock were formed many millions of years ago in a river valley where the now island of Ireland was part of a larger continental mass, Pangaea. It included the areas of today's Scotland and England and indeed also North and South Americas. When eventually the shifting tectonic plates split chunks off Pangaea, and the sea at a later point turned Ireland into an island, the two ends of the basalt formations were left as the visible portions, in Antrim and across the sea in Scotland in what's known as Fingal's Cave. It is so unusual that this part of the North Antrim coast is designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Long before that, of course, local people knew it through their folklore as the Giant's Causeway. Many are the stories and poems that have come down through the centuries about its own mythology. Outsiders began coming in the early 18th century, and when drawings and engravings of the unusual formations were circulated, it was the beginning of what is today's big tourism activity there. Until the British National Trust bought the land and the formation in 1961, the causeway was subject to pretty rampant exploitation, and appropriation of souvenirs of chunks of the basalt columns. The Trust worked with landowners, tourism organisations, communities and the local authority to establish a series of coastal walks and visitor facilities. The UNESCO designation came in 1986, recognising the outstanding geological and other natural features. Nowadays, up to a million people visit the Giant's Causeway each year. A new visitor centre was opened in 2012, replacing one which had burnt down a dozen years before. The building itself is an exemplar of environmentally passive design, worth browsing its facilities for that alone. But of course, it's the stories of the area that are the main attraction, and these are told in many ways. There are holograms of characters from the past, speaking about their lives, There are experts of today explaining the science. There are showings of the broad picture of the coast's wild nature and exhibits relating to the flora, fauna and the geological wonders of the area. From there, a choice of walks and a bus service to the key places allow individual exploration of the formations and the coastline's bays. It can be a self-guided experience with hand-carried audio, but there are also guides taking tours explaining the myths, the spaces, and the fancied elements in the formations such as the giant's boot, the wishing chair, the giant's granny, and the organ, each a story in its own right. Each a trigger of the imagination, enhancing a minute, or an hour, or a day of our life. That's the magic of mythology. I'm Brian Byrne. This is Cacullan Diary. Thanks for coming along.